Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Hardin, and during the course of uh, this semester, uh, Dr. Frazier is going to show you a number of movies, Texas movies, movies about Texans, uh, sometimes made in Texas, sometimes made uh, elsewhere, uh, with other states standing in as Texas. But uh, what, wherever they're made or whatever their motive, uh, almost all Texas film doesn't deal with the reality of Texas. Instead, it shows us the symbolic Texas, the Texas myth and mystique. And uh, a lot of uh, people I talk to are surprised to learn that the history of Texas cinema stretches uh, more than a century. Uh, about uh, 1911 is when the first uh, movies were made uh, by the Star Film Ranch, which actually uh, predated Hollywood. They would uh, grind out hundreds of these uh, one real many movies. Each one of them lasted about 15 minutes. But remember, this was before the age of the big uh, studios, and most of these were seen in neighborhood Nickelodeons. Uh, even though hundreds were produced, sadly today, uh, only three of the Star Film Ranch films uh, are extant. Uh, but that's a reflective of silent films generally. Over 90% of American silent films exist. Now let that sink in. Uh, if we had uh, lost 90% of the documentation, uh, say, of the American Civil War, how much poorer would our understanding of that pivotal event in American history be? And likewise, when we lose our movie history, we lose an important part of our cultural history. And of course, Texas has its own culture. And when we lose Texas movies, we lose an important part of, of Texas culture. Now, as Texas grew, so did uh, Texas movies. Uh, one of the biggest uh, was made in and around uh, San Antonio, Texas, in 1926. Uh, this was the uh, World War I aviation epic Wings, uh, starring among other people uh, Clara Bow, the It Girl, and a very young uh, Gary Cooper in one of his supporting roles. Uh, he wasn't a supporting actor long because it was this movie that made him a star. Now Wings, uh, made in and around San Antonio, Texas, was the first movie to win an Academy Award for Best Picture. They didn't call it uh, Best Picture in those days. In those days, they called it the Best Production. But the next year, they would start calling it uh, the Academy Award for Best Motion Picture. Understandably, most of the movies that were made about Texas were Westerns. And from the beginning, Hollywood and the movies had no interest in depicting the real Texas at all. So like I say, most of the uh, uh, characters you get, the Texas characters are presented as larger than life, uh, cowboys. Uh, when the oil came along, larger than life, uh, rich Texas oil men. Uh, but there was always this notion of uh, uh, larger than life, everything is bigger than Texas, that old stereotype. And perhaps one of the, the best illustrations of this is the film 1956, Giant. With, uh, and it, and if a movie was uh, ever aptly named, certainly this one was, because it hit all the stereotype bases. Every Texas stereotype is crammed into this movie. 
Now, when Texans found out that they were filming Edna Ferber's novel, they were incensed because the novel is highly critical of Texas uh, and its people. Not so the movie. The movie is very supportive and uh, Texans hated the book but loved uh, the movie. And uh, the uh, penchant for making large films uh, continued uh, in 1959 uh, when uh, John Wayne brought uh, people from Hollywood and all over the world actually to the little community of Brackettville to make his movie epic The Alamo. Uh, now this was uh, this was huge uh, at the time one of the largest Budgets ever spent on a, on a motion picture some, somewhere in the neighborhood of $12 million. Now that was a lot of money in 1959. Uh, the movie itself didn't come out till 1960, but it made uh, quite a splash. Uh, now again, uh, in keeping with tradition, there is not a frame of that movie that comports with historical reality in any way, shape, or form. But uh, it's a great movie, and people have said while it doesn't capture the reality of the Alamo, it went a long way to capture the spirit of the Alamo, or at least the Alamo in mythology. In the 60s, we saw uh, really a, a movie that, that defined Texas cinema and the 60s cinema, uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, uh, 1966. Uh, this was a, a movie because of some of its techniques and uh, depictions of graphic violence that really changed the way that uh, Hollywood made movies. And again, that movie was made in and around the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and was about uh, Texas, not heroes necessarily, but Texas anti-heroes, and of course back during the 1960s, the anti-hero was all the rage. Uh, well, where is uh, Texas cinema now? Uh, still, uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, movies that depict uh, Texas in mythic terms, but uh, you have uh, increasingly movies like John Sayles' Lone Star that uh, question the myth and mystique of, of Texas and are important for that reason. Uh, they, the questions they pose, uh, perhaps with a bit more sophistication than we're used to, is how useful are the old stereotypes, the old myths, the old mystique uh, for people living in the 21st century. So. Uh, as the course unfolds, uh, watch these movies, enjoy these movies, but uh, above all, as you are watching these movies, uh, question uh, what do these movies say, uh, how do they say it, and what do they say about what does it mean to be a Texan? And I think what you will find is that the answer to that question changes over the decades. Enjoy, guys.